Welcome to Bioremediation Course and Dr. McKee. In this video, we'll talk about the bioremediation limitation and also we'll explain why we need to use the microbe in bioremediation and also how does bioremediation work and what are the requirements for the bioremediation. All of these points will be explained after the break. Welcome back. Uh, do you think the bioremediation is suitable for any pollutant to degrade? Actually, the answer no. Because the bioremediation is only limited for compounds are biodegradable. So for the season, this is called some limitation. So the bioremediation cannot degrade any pollutants. So not all compounds are rapid and complete degradation by the bioremediation. This is called one of the limitation of bioremediation. Some of the products of biodegradation are more toxic than the parent compounds. After the degradation, the results of the degraded compound may be more toxic than the original pollutant. This is the one of the limitation of bioremediation. Also, the biological processes are highly specific. It depends what type of the pollutant is, what type of microbe used as well. So this microbe is specific for such compound or such pollutant. This pollutant can be degraded or not. This, this microbe able to produce some enzymes to degrade such pollutant or not. So this is the, called also the biological uh, processes specific for some pollutants and not for others. Also for the bioremediation process, we need also important side factor required, like a suitable environmental growth conditions, the suitable temperature, suitable humidity, suitable pH, and also the appropriate levels of the nutrients and also contaminants. High concentration of the contaminants may be cannot degrade it. Less nutrients also. If the microbe has insufficient nutrients, bioremediation also cannot occur. Also for bioremediation, also the, the, uh, it's difficult to form the bioremediation from bench scale to the full scale field operations. That means it doesn't matter, the bioremediation occurs in the lab, that means will be successfully in the large scale or maybe in site. Also we need to do the research to improve the bioremediation technology, especially in the pollutant areas containing a mixture of the, uh, some contaminants. Maybe this mixture not the same in the uh, concentration levels. Some contaminants with the high level concentration, others with low level concentration. Also, the contaminant may be present as may be in solid form or liquid form or sometimes in gas form. So, always the contaminant not in the same form or only one form, but sometimes it's varied from form to another. For bioremediation time, it takes longer time than other treatments like the removal of soil or called the excavation or even the incineration of the pollutants. Regulatory we have the uncertainty regarding acceptable performance criteria for bioremediation and also there is no accepted definition of clean evaluating a performance for the bioremediation. So it's very difficult to say clean after the bioremediation because not 100% of the bioremediation may be occurs. But sometimes the bioremediation just to reduce the concentration of such pollutants. So why we need to use the microbe in bioremediation? Because the microbe has very good metabolic diversity. Also the bacteria grows very fast. The bacteria are able to grow, fully grow, within less than 24 hours. If all the nutrients have been provided and the Population may be double uh, every 45 minutes, so very fast. And the pristine soil containing a lot of the bacteria, containing from 100 to 1000 aerobic bacteria per gram of soil. 
and be able to increase up to 10 power 5 within one week if the carbon source is introduced. So what is the microbial consortium? Consortium means microbial population or microbial group divided into different groups. The first group aerobic bacteria. It has the degradative ability like the pseudomonas, alkalogenes, rhodococcus, mycobacterium. All of these are examples for the aerobic bacteria. At the same time, they have the degradative ability. I mean, can be used for the bioremediation or may be able to degrade some pollutants compounds. Also, these types of microbes also reported to degrade the pesticides, hydrocarbons for both alkanes and other compounds. And all of these bacteria can be used the contaminant as the sole carbon source and energy as well. The second group of the microbial consortia is the anaerobic bacteria. Actually, these bacteria are not frequently used as the aerobic bacteria. But now this type of bacteria, anaerobic bacteria, increasing the interest to use in the bioremediation process. Especially for the bioremediation of polychlorinated biphenyls, PCB, in river sediments. Containing the type of bacteria, anaerobic bacteria, because in sediments there is no more oxygen available. Also can be used for the decolorination of solvents like trichloroethylene, TCE, and also the chloroform. And the decolorination means remove the chlorine or Cl from the pollutant. The third type after the uh, aerobic and anaerobic bacteria is the fungi. This is called the lignocellulitic fungi. This fungi able to degrade the lignin and lignin is the one of the polysaccharides compounds. This type of fungi are the, uh, related to the called white root fungus, la like the mushroom, like Phanerokitty, and this one able to uh, degrade different toxic environmental pollutants. And this type of fungi, the common substrate used, includes the straw, sawdust, and corn coop as well. So this type of the substrates should be uh, cellulitic substrates. Can be used as the carbon source for such fungi. The fourth group of the microbial consortium is the methylotrophs. These are aerobic bacteria able to utilize methane for carbon source and energy. So the initial enzyme in the pathway for aerobic degradation called methane monooxygenase enzyme to degrade the pollutant using the such uh, bacteria and has broad substrate range and active against wide range of compounds including the chlorinated aliphatics, trichloroethylene and also dichloroethylene. So now, how is the bioremediation works? Actually, the microorganism able to use the contaminant as the nutrients, or maybe as the carbon source, or even as the energy source. If you look at this figure, you can find the bacteria able to eat the oil or hydrocarbon waste or any other pollutant. Then the microbe able to digest and metabolize the waste and able to turn the waste into the water and also the some harmless gas. Finally, the microbe able to release the water and the gases back into the nature. So actually, this is very complicated process depending on some factors. As the, what is the environmental conditions? What are the composition of the microbial community as well? And also depends on the nature and the amount of pollution present. Now, what are the bioremediation requirements? In this table, we can summarize these requirements. For bioremediation requirements, we need environmental factors, like the uh, available and enough soil moisture. Also, we need oxygen. 
for the aerobic bacteria and also uh, important for oxidation reactions. Also need the redox potential for oxidation reduction reactions. Also we need nutrients like the carbon source, nitrogen source, phosphorus as well for microbial growth. Also we need the suitable pH for optimal condition as well as for microbial growth. Also we need the temperature, suitable temperature for the optimum condition for biomediation as well as the required for the microbial activity. And also some contaminants like the hydrocarbon, 5 to 10 percent of dry weight of soil and should be not too toxic for the micro. Also we need some heavy metals for optimum condition around 700 ppm per p million and for, and for the microbial activity we need total contain about 2000 ppm. So these are the minimum requirements in, for the bioremediation. So now let's explain what are the fundamentals for the cleaning up reactions. As mentioned before, we have the aerobic metabolism. This is the microbe using the oxygen in their metabolism to degrade the contaminant. And we have the another metabolism called the anaerobic metabolism. So microbe cannot use the oxygen, but maybe use another chemical compound to degrade the contaminants, like nitrate, sulfate, carbon dioxide, and so on. Now we need to talk about the bioremediation history. Actually, the history of bioremediation using microorganisms to clean up the environmental pollutants in the environment take back to 600 BC, very old bioremediation. Ancient Romans at time directed the wastewater into large tanks outside the city. And wastewater treatment was carried by the microbial activity. The first unexpected first start for applying bioremediation in human life. So this is very old. After industrial evolution, water and soil pollution greatly extended in human environment. So comparing the performance of various methods applied to clean up the environment from different types of pollutants as well as seeking for the clean up and sustainable methods lead to development of the bioremediation technology. This table explains the development of the bioremediation since 1900, the time the development of biological process to treat the wastewater and sludge, then 1950, development of industrial wastewater treatment process, and 1960, research on the bioremediation has been developed, and 1970, the environmental status of unprecedented scope pass, and in 1980, it becomes clear that the fundamental of the biogeochemical processes to bioremediation, and in 1990, you can find many successful bioremediation technologies are developed. And in 2000, in situ bioremediation accepted as cost-effective. Clean up alternatives for sites contaminated with a lot of the organic pollutants. So it was the sum of the bioremediation history. So now we need to know how long it takes the bioremediation process. As mentioned before, the time it takes to bioremediate a site depends on the some factors. As type and amount of harmful chemical present the size and depth of the polluted area also depends on the type of soil and the conditions present and also whether cleanup occurs above ground or underground. So the time will be different according to the conditions you have. Depends a lot of factors and conditions. And sure, these factors vary from site to site and from organism to other as well. So the degradation time from the bacteria different from the other bacteria. 
and the degradation time different from bacteria to fungus from fungus to another bacteria or from fungus to another fungus as well so it may take a few months or even several years for microbe to eat enough of the harmful chemicals to clean up the site so there is no standard time for the bioremediation process different from factor to factor so this is the end of our video and I hope you learned something and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to reach all of my new videos. Thank you, good luck and bye bye.